So darlings, let's do a little bit of contemplating. See, we're still alive. Be amazed, we're still alive, still going. Um, okay. So what should we do today, I wonder? Let me think about it. I think we can do some Tara meditation, okay? So Tara, these wonderful practices, you know, in Tantra, all these Buddhas, they're just different. They're manifestations of different qualities, two things that we either are trying to purify. So some of the Buddhas are purified aspects of certain delusions and some other of the Buddhas are actually aspects of virtue. So this one is Tara. And, you know, you could say that the Buddhas, any Buddha, any enlightened being has three essential qualities. One is wisdom, and that can be depicted by Manjushri, Manju, gentle voice. He's holding a sword aloft, cutting through our ignorance. Then there's the second quality of a Buddha is compassion, and that can be manifested as Chenrezi, compassionate eyed one. And then the third quality, you've got to have compassion, which is the wish to benefit others. You need the wisdom to know how, but you need the power to do so. And that's Tara. She's like action, action energy. Often, you know, this practice, this energy of action, cutting through the obstacles, success, making things happen, fearlessness. That's often depicted as female, and that's Tara. In fact, her name means in Tibetan Dol, Dolma, it means liberator. She's the liberator, and they say from the fears of samsara. And all that means is liberated from ignorance, liberated from attachment, liberated from anger. And once, we've, once we're liberated from those ridiculous states of mind, we are fearless, quite literally. So she represents that quality, okay? And, you know, it's female, but, I mean, we all need it, whether we're girls or boys or androgynous or bi, bi, not bipolar, what's the other word, binary, whatever we identify with, okay? It's quite options these days, quite a few. Whatever we are, we all need this quality. So we just imagine this quality manifesting in this green light body in the sky in front of us. Just imagine, do your best. And if, you're not, if you can't visualize very well, don't worry, just imagine the manifestation of this energy in front of us, you know, the presence of it. So she's kind of in this, in this style of the Buddha called the enjoyment body, it was from Tantra. And a green light body looking totally gorgeous, not like the monk style. It's like this gorgeous style in sort of the royal Indian royal aspect. So she's kind of got silken colored clothes on a lower part of her body, kind of multicolored. Her left leg is drawn in like meditation, but her right leg is, is relaxed out, sitting on another little multicolored lotus. And this is in her action pose. She's ready to hop up to help sentient beings, action energy. And then she's got these gorgeous breasts, you know, she's green, green light, green is like action. And uh, kind of sort of vaguely shawls around her shoulder. If you see the pictures, you'll see what she's like. And then, you know, gorgeous, she's got this gorgeous face and she's sometimes slightly fierce looking. Her eyes are slightly wide open, which, which is also part of her action energy. Like the Buddha, you know, his eyes are half closed, half open, which shows he's in the kind of meditative pose, you know, but Tara, is action. So her eyes are slightly wide open. This also shows her kind of slightly kind of wrathful aspect. You wouldn't cross Tara, I tell you. And she's got her hair, as they all have, partially held up in a top knot, black. And you visualize, imagine the rest of it hanging down her back. Everything's crystal clear, not substantial like a statue. Radiantly beautiful. Her face is totally beautiful. She's got two hands. And her right hand is on her right knee, the fingers pointing, her palm is up and the, the palm is open. And there's this kind of gesture of kind of giving things, kind of a generous kind of gesture, open. The fingers are pointing up, resting on her knee, her right knee. And the, so she's also in her right hand, she's holding the stem of a blue upala flower, like a lotus flower, blue, that blooms at her right ear. And then her left hand, the fingers pointing up in the mudra of 
enlightenment, I always forget it. I'm sorry, every time I forget it. And the fingers are pointing up and she's also holding the stem of another blue upala flower that blooms at her left ear. Everything's radiantly beautiful, made of light, so happy, crystal clear. On her crown, she's got this kind of crown, like a, it's a bit like a tiara in the front of her head, you know, five pointed crown. And beautifully bejeweled her throat, her ears, her upper arms, her wrists, her ankles. And the thing is, that these are like these pictures, these statues, these visualizations, these Buddhas are like visual language. Every tiny thing has a meaning, all together playing, fulfilling the function of showing the meaning of compassionate action, you know, wise action. So if we have a spiritual teacher, a guru, a lama, a mentor, whatever word moves your heart, person that we have chosen as the embodiment of Buddha for us to guide us to our own Buddhahood, then we think it's their mind manifesting as Buddha Tara for our benefit. This makes it so personal, you know. Just imagine her there in front, very happily there to benefit us. That's her job. So now we visualize at her brow, a white om, at her throat, a red ah. Okay, if we speak, if we know Sanskrit or Tibetan, great. If not, the Roman letters, om, and then a h r, and then at her heart, a blue hung. Right, representing enlightened body, speech, and mind. So now this is called the commitment being or the samaya being, our visualization. Right, we're sort of thinking it's not real Buddha yet. So what we do is we visualize beams of light, radiant beams of light going out from the blue hall to all the 10 directions, north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, and up and down, that's 10, hooking the energy of all the actual Taras, all the beings who become Tara, who are hooking the energy of the body, speech, and mind of all the Taras of the universe from their pure lands, from their abodes hooking the energy of all these Taras and all of that energy of the enlightened body, speech and mind comes back with these beams of light and enters back into our Tara at her heart, tr completely transforming her into this amazing, radiant, even more radiant, more marvelous, more beautiful. Zahu, Bamho, and they become non-dual. So now she, you imagine our visualization is the is oneness of all the towers of the universe. Now she's the actual Buddha. Imagine this. So now we just express our reliance on the on Tara, on Buddha Tara, thinking we're going to do this little practice. We are doing this little practice so we can um, strengthen our own capacity to become Tara. So we can be exactly as Tara is, which is to be effortlessly able to benefit all sentient beings. So we become Tara, so we can do that, exactly that job as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible to become Tara so we can be a benefit to all sentient beings. So we do this practice and we rely upon her for this and we delight in this, we delight in doing this practice. So now we imagine from Tara's brow, she sends radiant beams of um, white light from the white ohm at her brow. These meditations are all really variations of the same thing, which the Buddhas change, you know? And there's just a simple kind of generic visualization. It's very delicious. So we visualize she so happily, so compassionately sends these radiant beams of white light from her brow, enter into our brow, filling us completely, totally completely, this white light, totally purifying all the suffering of our bodies and all the negative karma we've ever created since beginningless time, 
by harming sentient beings with our bodies. Totally purifying all of this. Totally purifying. The white light completely fills us. As we recite a few times, Tara, her, her, her mantra. And mantra is just the same. It's just the, it's the sound visual. It's the sound manifestation of the same energy as the visual one. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Swaha 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 Om Tare the, the, the white light flooding into you, totally purifying. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Swaha Om Tare Tu Tare Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Swaha So now Lama Tara so compassionately this time sends the red beams of light, laser beams from the red R at her throat, penetrating our throat, instantly filling us and annihilating all the nonsense of our negative speech, all the rubbish that just pours out of our mouths, uncontrolled, revving on about nothing, all the harsh speech the, in the bad mouthing behind backs, the speech that's not true, all this speech that harms us and harms others, and all the karmic imprints of, and all the suffering as a result of this, all annihilated, full of this radiant red light filling us. How amazing. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Swaha 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 Om Tare Tu Tare Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Swaha. So now Lama Tara so compassionately this time sends blue beams of light, blue like the sky, 
penetrating these laser beams from her blue hung penetrating our heart chakra, instantly filling us and instantly annihilating the delusions, the neurotic states of mind that are not at the core of our being, are not intrinsic, are not, and therefore can be removed. This is Buddha's amazing finding. These neuroses, these delusions are the source of our own pain and the source of why we harm others. Annihilated, can you imagine? Utterly gone, full of this blissful blue light. What a relief. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Svaha 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 So now imagine we've, uh, they call this removing the obstacles to liberation. So basically, as a result of all our hard work, we've now cut the root of delusions and we've realized emptiness and perfected it and thus achieved our own nirvana, our own cessation of suffering and its causes. But we can do more. So we continue to practice, and he would now add bodhicitta to the mix. And eventually, with all of our practice of perfecting our realizations of emptiness and realizing bodhicitta, perfecting all of this, we now achieve tarahood, we achieve buddhahood. We remove the obstacles to omniscience. So this time, Lama Tara is so compassionate, he sends the three lights together white to the brow, red to the throat. Blue to the heart, together, imagining, purifying even these subtlest imprints in the mind, and now achieving on enlightenment, achieving enlightenment. How amazing! Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Svaha. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Svaha. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Svaha 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 Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Om Tare to Tare to this one, Tare to Tare to this one, Tare to Tare to this one. Om 
So now you imagine Lamatara's lotus that she's sitting on, the multicolored lotus, and the lotus that her right leg is resting on just dissolves up into her body. So now you imagine she very happily comes to sit above our own crown, each one of us facing the same way as us. So visualize her literally coming from in front of us above her crown, our crown facing the same way. Very happily. And now you imagine wanting to be oneness with our body, speech, and mind, so delighted, so joyfully. She dissolves through our crown and it fills us completely. And we imagine that the energy of the body, speech, and mind of our Lama, the energy of the body, speech, and mind of Tara, merge with the energy of our body, speech, and mind. As Lama Yeshi puts it, they become union oneness. Just imagine this. Guru, Buddha, you, same. So now you imagine that you kind of expand to fill the universe. You visualize your own self expanding to fill the universe. This vast, clear, radiant, blissful, no thoughts for about a minute or two. As big as the universe, the nature of bliss, no thoughts, no thoughts. Namiya, she sometimes would say zero. So then we think, well, we're Buddha now, but what good is that? What, what, that's fine for us, but what about sentient beings? I mean, what has driven us, we can think, for countless lifetimes, practicing wisdom and compassion, what has driven us to become a Buddha is our wish to benefit others. So then, of course, we have to manifest to benefit them. So we now visualize all the sentient beings in the form of friends, enemies, and strangers, a really good combination, all the objects of our three delusions, right in front, the, the objects of our aversion, you know, the ones who've harmed us, whom we don't like, who annoy us, upset us. To the left, our beloveds, the objects of our attachment. And then to the right, everyone else in the universe, 99.99%, .99%, all the strangers, all the objects of our indifference pervading space in front, behind, above, below, to the sides, all other sentient beings. And we see them all in the form of humans, which is the form they can get enlightened in. But they're each experiencing their own suffering from the different realms, you know. The whole of space form. Just imagine. So we think they're exactly the same as each other not a fraction of difference from one point of view. From the point of view that they wish to be happy and don't suffer, don't wish to suffer. Everybody's equal from that point of view. Equal to me as well, there's no difference. So we now imagine from our heart, billions of tiny little green taras emanate out, entering into the hearts first of all the objects of our aversion, the objects of our attachment, and all the objects of our indifference to all the sentient beings, billions of Taras going out. First, we imagine it takes away all their suffering. And that's the practice of compassion. Compassion is, may you not suffer. So we're imagining we're taking away the causes of the, the suffering and its causes from all these billions of sentient beings. Taras entering into them, relieving them of their pain, relieving them of their delusions. Imagine this so happily. 
Tare to Tare to this farm, Tare to Tare to this farm, Tare to Tare to this farm. And then again, these Taras are emanating out billions of them from your heart entering into all these beings, above, behind, below, to the sides, in front. This time, giving them everything they need. And this is love. Love is, may you be happy. Compassion is, may you not suffer. So now we practice the action of giving them happiness, which is the activation of love. We're giving them everything they need. The starving people, give, imagine them receiving food. Those who are sick, imagine being free of suffering and free of pain. Those who are lonely, giving them friends. You know, whatever sentient beings need. You imagine giving it to them. How incredible. So happily, seeing them all be happy. I'm tired to tell you to do this. And now you imagine Tara's again going out to my hearts, this time turning them all into their own Tara. They all manifest as Tara. They all turn into green Taras to see them all transforming. Om Tari Jatari Jodhisva. Om Tari Jatari. How amazing. Om Tari Jatari Jodhisva. Now we imagine Lama Tara in, uh, oh no, she's inside us, that's what we call Kama Tara. So now you visualize they all dissolve into you. From all the 10 directions, all these Taras dissolve into you, enhancing even more brilliantly your own Tara nature, you imagine. If you received empowerment, you can receive yourself as Tara. If you haven't received empowerment, you can imagine Tara as your nature, you know, Tara is at your heart. Imagine that. And then we just finish with this, this thought, you know, these seeds we've planted during this 30 minutes, 27 minutes of meditation, every single tiny thought we've had has sown a seed. So we think may all this exactly as we've visualized, may it happen in the future. How amazing. As we've visualized. And may Bodhicitta grow in the hearts of all. And may we never give up, never give up, never give up.